previously on Bottom Feeders. Holy solid frickin' fish. It's hard to believe. I, I knew they were there, but then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. I don't know how the hell they did it, but they're gone. Oh, it's kind of like, geez, what the heck did they come out here for? There's always that hope that you're gonna hit the right amount of fish to make a, a good chunk of money. We said that was a cruddy net, but very <laughs> unexpected. Got a bite? Oh yeah, here we go. The gods are gonna look down on us here a little bit. Keep them coming. If the nets stay consistent, we should do pretty good. Woohoo! We're on them. Carp, sheephead, buffalo, and suckers. For most Americans, these bottom feeders have no place in our lakes or on our plates. But there are fishermen who have found opportunity. Girls, your dad's heading out west to go fishing for a while. I'm not sure when I'll be home. We are gonna hit them hard today. How many fish are out there? More than I've ever seen. We're on cloud nine right now. We've got to seal the deal. This wind ain't worth it out here, I can tell you that. How can we have it so made and then in the blink of an eye, just they're gone. Just got too damn windy. But uh, you always anticipate the worst. So here it is. The road to opportunity can be a little bumpy. 1,600 miles away from home, Tim Adams and his partner, Jeff Reederman, must turn their luck around. Better catch some fish just to pay for the fuel. This is a pretty big deal for Jeff and I, I guess, if we can get out here and catch a bunch of fish. There's no return date planned at this point. I'm pretty happy. I know the fish are in the lake. We'll get them. It's been a long time since I've really been excited about doing something. This is it. This is our chance to get ahead. It's not realistic to think that the very first damn haul I pull in a new lake out in a new country is going to be that way, and we just have to uh, modify our approach. I get nerved up sometimes, but uh, usually doesn't last long. Well, here we go. We're about 10 miles away. Hello. What? Slow down, are you all right? What happened? The fish market's on fire. Just hold, all right. Well, call me right back. The place is burning down. I mean, the place where we take a lot of our fish. It's like, holy cow. You gotta be kidding me. That's not good. Holy crap. The very latest now on a local fishery destroyed by a fire in the village of Pepin. It started yesterday about 4.45 p.m. here in Pepin. Firefighters are out here for 12 hours fighting the fire, and you can see some of the damage. The fire department right now says there is no cause of the fire. It's not being ruled suspicious. I, I, I just, it breaks my heart. I'm going in, I'm done for the day. In Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, fish market owner Jeff Ritter is heading in from the cold. I've had a long day, I'm whooped. How about you? Yep. Jeff's wife, Sue, has recently taken a larger role in their business. So how did everything else go today? Good. Do I have to deliver on Thursday? Uh, the plan is yes. Things are swamped. Uh, Orders keep coming in. I feel like we've just been running around in circles trying to keep our head above water, but um, so far, so good. If you could deliver, I'd appreciate it. Ron can't. What's that? Now, who the Ron heck can't. is this? No, Ron can't. No, no, no. Hello? Really? It, it went right to the ground, huh? 
we got some good friends up there that rely on that. So I wonder what's going to become of things. At first, I didn't believe it. I thought somebody was telling me a bunch of a joke or whatnot. He made a comment about get ready, and it's like, get ready for what? And he's like, you know, these guys are going to need a place to sell their fish. Well, those people up there are going to have to sell fish makes me feel extremely nervous because I, I think we're right to the point of being maxed out. I, I don't see how we can keep going any busier. What's that going to do? We'll just take it one day at a time. Everything will work yeah, out. Yeah, I feel horrible for them guys. In Pepin, Wisconsin, Mike Johnson is waking up to a nightmare. Wow, is it ever rough looking. I can't believe it. All, all the years that that thing's been there for everybody, I've always been there for it, and it's always been there for me, and now it's uh, leveled. A lot of good memories. I guess that's all it is now is memories, because it will definitely never be the same again. Everybody in that town has got some memory tied to that building. Either drove for him, clean fish for him, part-time, full-time. I'm just amazed. It's just like I'm still in a bad dream. This might just be a, a wake-up call. How much does the commercial fishing industry contribute to the U.S. economy each year? How much does the commercial fishing industry contribute to the U.S. economy each year? The answer is A. The commercial fishing creates $59 billion every year in jobs and exports. With the market smoldering at home, Tim and Jeff are focusing on Idaho. Well, there's, there's nothing I can do except for go over there and look at the mess. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people. It's going to affect workers, fishermen, everything, you know? We were planning on processing a lot of these fish that we catch right there at the one that burned down. I don't know how this is going to affect me yet. I haven't really thought that far ahead. <laughs> I totally feel like I should go back there, but I don't know how to what to even do. Today, Tim and Jeff are fishing almost 10,000 acre Lake Lowell. The first order of business is to build a pen to hold any fish they catch. <laughs> Let's just lay it out, lay it out right here, piss on it. With confidence high, Tim and Jeff have already arranged for trucks to come in for their haul. Tie it more in the middle, don't matter. We gotta go through these ropes better than this too. That's They've just been getting grabbed in a big wad. I feel a hell of a lot of pressure. There's a lot of people whose schedules are dependent upon us. The crew is using a seine to create a net wall from the surface of the water to the bottom of the lake. Oh, no! Gotta be mudded in or something. Fish are taking the corks. We got them! Come on, guys! We got them today, boys! Look at that! This is it. This is it. This is why we come out here. I mean, this has got me excited now. Ah, but hey, we got them! Yeah! Fire it up! Woo! We got them! We might have a million pounds! I wouldn't doubt it if we do. I know, sucker! See them fish out there? I had my doubts, but not anymore. The bag is boiling with fish. Mucho grande. Whatever the hell that means. When you see a pile of fish like that, it's like it validated the trip of money invested, and uh, my reputation is on the line, and, and finally we pulled it off, and there's the fish. If you guys are investing in the in the futures market, I'd invest in tartar sauce fu futures. <laughs>
more than 100 fishermen sold their catch to the Pepin market. Like Rick Johnson, each is faced with their own predicament. It's not a good deal for none of us. I mean, it's, uh, it's the only place we had to get rid of fish. I guess, uh, as I say, you got to roll with the punches. I'm not going to quit fishing, and I, I like what I do. I can't see myself doing nothing else. No, I wish that we didn't have to rely on the market, but I got to rely on the market. I can spend the winter looking, looking for another market and hopefully that something will work out. I ain't gonna give up. I'm too stubborn to give it up. Well, I'd have bet anything, I'd at least had a few fish here. It makes me worry a little. For Mike Johnson, fishing has long been a job and a way of life. Got to catch more fish than this, obviously, or I cannot do this. Without a market, I don't think I'll be able to bring a daily catch in anymore, and it's going to be hard for me to tie up fish. Eventually going to have to get uh, some kind of nine to five job. At the point right now, I should be going and looking for a job because I just need a check every week. Got a few fish, I guess. Not really enough, but. This is Mike's wife, Angie. I gotta think about this job, I guess. I gotta take care of, you know, number one and my family, and that's just the, the way it is. You know, when you get a job and you're just gonna hate it. Yeah, I know. Maybe I can get something I can tolerate. That'd be nice. I guess paying the bills would be nice. That would be sweet. Having some insurance would be nice. I don't know if I'm going to want to be around you because you're going to be so ordinary. Uh, I'll be all right. In Idaho, a truck is on the way to transport the fish to the market. With only one boat available, Tim and Jeff are sending their two trusted hands, James and Chris, upriver to start the morning's work. These guys know what's going on. I kind of get the fish tightened up and get everything ready so when we get out there, we can start moving the fish. Everything feels great. Feels great right now. Sane look okay? I hope everything's all right. At the landing, Tim and Jeff strategize how to load their fish. What do you want, a fast-moving bobcat or a tractor? Or? Whatever they got. Yeah. So. Depends on what they have it'll there. It'll be fast enough, whatever they got. Feeling pretty good. But everything came together. There was a lot of planning for years on end. And finally we pulled it off and there's the fish. One of them steaks and staked them corks up. Oh, we gotta get her in, so. We can get out there to check the bag. To make loading easier, Chris and James are drawing the net tighter around the fish. Are you kidding me? I hit one of them pilings when I went to take off. Tim's gonna shoot me. Hello. Hey, Tim. Um, we got a major problem. What's wrong? I hit one of these concrete pilings underwater. No! I sheared off the bottom of the motor and bent the prop shaft. 1,700 miles from home. I mean, this is a huge problem. We only got two boats to begin with. Now we only got one good boat. We're going to have to go. We'll get a boat here, and we'll come over. We'll get out there. Just have them guys grip, and he should know how to start tightening up them fish. Sorry, Tim. The truck is just a few hours away. I mean, we got to get them fish down there and ready to go, and we got to rent a machine. I know. We just got to deal with one problem at a time. We're going to have to go like hell now. Without this boat, we are absolutely screwed again. All of a sudden, it's just like getting caught in an avalanche, and we're right at the bottom of it, and we're seeing it coming. I just can't believe it. 
They should have them fish type. I mean, they know how to do that. I hey, think. Maybe. Let me get this pulled around. Upriver, the rookies continue to prep for the loadout. All Tim can do is wait. Everything's clicking together, and then everything all of a sudden just goes paywire. God. If I was at home, wouldn't even be an issue. We're, we're running on a shoestring operation here. It's not like we can bebop back home and grab another boat. That's not happening, so. We, we, we made, you and I made one critical mistake this morning. I did. I should have jumped in that boat. I'll guarantee you none of that would have happened if I'd have been there. I mean, what are we going to do? We can't run a doggone motor. Pulling hard! Fish are taking the corks. We got them! You guys know what's going on. I've got no worries with them guys. Are you kidding me? I sheared off the bottom of the motor and bent the prop shaft. For some, an obstacle becomes a dead end. Down a boat and with a haul on the line, Tim Adams and Jeff Riederman have no choice but to push on. God, you know better than to take off around them concrete things. I mean, Jesus. Well, let's get these trucks moved so we can get this other boat. Luckily, the, we're gonna get the, a boat to get out there with. <laughs> it it kind of um, happened here. I, I found another boat that we could use. I mean, it's not it's not the perfect boat, but but it'll work for us to, to do the things that we need to do. Well, that's a wave cutter there. Thank God, because at least we got some way of getting in the fish tightened up now. At least we can get the fish on the truck and get a couple of loads out for them. I want to get out there and see what's really going on. Losing that other boat was just terrible. Things are starting to look up a little bit now. With still nothing to show from their entire trip to Idaho, Tim and Jeff are rushing upriver to get the haul ready for transport. Come on, Chris, you can do it. Hope they, they got the crotch of the net in the boat. No, they don't even have the crotch of the net in the boat. We got big problems. And how much worse can our luck possibly get? You probably dumped all the fish out. We went through this this morning. You guys tightened up the bag before we even had the crotch in. Let that bag back out for now. Christ. I don't even know what these guys are trying to do. I've never seen anything like it. What does that say right there on that tag? Left corner bag. All right. I'm getting a little mad, and I don't get mad very often. It's just like grabbing three people in New York City and telling them to go out there and tighten up them fish. You guys just totally dumped the fish out. They, they don't know, Jeff. It's just the way it is. Yeah, they just dumped all our fish out, and we couldn't get here to stop them. Totally up. I've already got thousands of dollars invested into this trip. Pissed away like that, it's kind of upsetting. Unbelievable, the amount of fish we had yesterday and what we got today because of stupid mistakes. And some of that, I mean, it's, it's hard to believe that I didn't come out here. This was supposed to start making things all right again, and we really screwed it up bad. God, the greatest haul that never happened. the Pepin fish market in shambles and a family to feed. Fisherman Mike Johnson is making a serious change. I'm gonna run over to Shruths and see if they won't uh, put me to work. Give me a big kiss. <laughs> Love you, sweetie. Love you, thanks. Good. Yeah, bye. 40 hours compared to 100 hours on the river. The scales are tipped so to the 100 hours on the river. 
I gotta take care of my family. And then right now, this is what I need to do to take care of my family. So I can live eating a couple of carp that I can catch, but they're not gonna go for that. So <laughs> they want cheeseburgers. Well, and a roof over their head. Mike worked in this shop years ago. Hey, Mike. Hey, Adam. How are you? Not bad. How are you today? Uh, kind of a little bit out of work here. I was wondering uh, if you had any work around here for me. To work for another man, for me, is so tough because I am uh, the whole time I'm there, instead of focusing on my work, I'm thinking about fishing. I guess I've done it before, so I yep. know I can anyway. When do you think about coming in? Well, I guess the sooner the better. I gotta get the kids fed here, so. Yeah, well we could uh, get some stuff to do this morning. We could do some paperwork this afternoon, start tomorrow. It might be an easier way for me to go, really, if I actually got used to it, but I, I just don't know. You might not wanna hear it, but I think the only thing we got is probably second shift nights, and we could probably use a guy for that, but it's, Love well, seven. Probably still fish a little one too, and, and yeah. work nights and yeah. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Adam. Sure. I yeah, good to see you. Bud. Yeah, you too. It's gonna be uh, definitely rough to to do something else. I'm really just gonna have to for a while. I'm, I'm positive of it. It's a rough way for a guy like me. I'm still hireable. I'm probably just always dreaming about fishing and they know that so. Thank you.